At the entrance to the Johnson Space Center, two NASA T-38 training aircraft are on display, and to date, two of these SpaceX reusable Falcon 9 boosters have each flown 17 times. One of the main attractions of a visit to the Space Center is a Saturn V moon rocket. On a previous visit to the center in 1988, the Saturn V was displayed outside, which enabled its impressive size to be fully taken in from a distance. The new display enables the sheer size of the rocket, its three stages and the Apollo spacecraft to be appreciated up close. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. This incredible NASA footage shows a launch of Apollo 11 on the first manned lunar landing in July 1969. Liftoff, the Saturn V rocket plus the Apollo spacecraft weighed almost 2,900 tons. This is the Apollo Mission Control Room, which has been set up to show what it looked like in July 1969. Currently, it features an audio-visual presentation simulating what actually happened here during the first moon landing. Lights on. Forward. Forward. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Great shadow. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, just... Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Drifting, uh... Tranquility base here. 
Back in 1988, Mission Control was conducting space shuttle operations. Back then, Building 9 housed the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, consisting of a variety of space shuttle training mock-ups. Currently, the building houses full-size International Space Station modules, maintained as accurately as possible to the real orbiting space complex. There's also a Russian Soyuz spacecraft, as well as the Russian Zarya ISS module. Nearby is an Orion capsule, NASA's future vehicle for crewed space missions. This is one iteration of NASA's lunar human landing system, which has now been superseded by SpaceX's Starship. Another option was created by engineering company Dynetics, shown here. a mock-up of an Orion capsule used for training purposes. Advances in robotics are also being made here at the Johnson Space Center. Mercury Atlas 9, the final mission of the Mercury program, launched on May 15, 1963, with Gordon Cooper aboard. Apollo 17 lifting off on the only nighttime launch of the 7 Saturn V crewed lunar missions. The Apollo 17 command module had carried Cernan, Schmidt and Evans on what would become the final lunar landing mission, splashing down on December 19, 1972. This is a lunar excursion module along with a lunar roving vehicle. The real LRVs would be used on the final three Apollo missions and were left behind on the lunar surface. When Armstrong, Olgen and Collins returned from the moon on Apollo 11, they entered the mobile quarantine facility for the journey back to Houston. This is Mike Collins' bio-isolation garment. P-51 
Cape Conrad on Apollo 12 and his lunar spacesuit. The two lunar samples on the left were collected during Apollo 15 and the other two were from Apollos 16 and 17 respectively. NASA and SpaceX are working together on crewed missions to Mars. This is the new Mission Mars display. The first launch of NASA's new heavy lift SLS or Space Launch System on November 16, 2022 with the uncrewed Artemis 1 test mission around the moon with an Orion capsule. Here you can take a look inside a mock-up of an Orion capsule. The two shuttle carrier aircraft or SCAs were used to ferry space shuttles from landing sites back to the Kennedy Space Center. The orbiters were placed on top of the SCAs by mate demate devices. This is a full-scale mock-up of an orbiter named Independence, which has a detailed cockpit. It was originally displayed at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Florida, where it was named Explorer. It was moved to Johnson Space Center in 2012. The aircraft was stripped of most interior fittings and the fuselage specially braced to carry the weight of the shuttle orbiters. And with that, our visit to the Johnson Space Center came to an end.